Welcome to Rao Online. Today's topic is vulval intraepithelial neoplasia. So the term vulval intraepithelial neoplasia was introduced by International Society for the Study of Vulvar Diseases in 1986. And recently we have a classification which classifies vulval intraepithelial neoplasia into three types. One is low grade squamous intraepithelial lesions which are the flat condylomas or the H human papilloma virus effect. We have the vulval high grade squamous intraepithelial lesions that is vulval HSIL. The vulval LGSIL is a type 1, vulval HSIL is a type 2 and then there is a third variety which is called as the VIN. Now this uh, vulval high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion corresponds to the earlier VIN, usual type. The third variety in this new classification is the VIN differentiated type. Now I will in next slide, I will tell the difference between what is VIN usual type and what is the VIN differentiated type. So this 2014 classification which was given earlier did not include low grade SIL lesions because they were considered as just a reaction to human papilloma virus and they were not considered in as precancerous lesions. However, when the classification was, was redone, it included the low grade squamous intraepithelial lesions and these low grade intraepithelial lesions are the condylomas and they are associated with non-oncogenic types of HPV that is HPV 6 and 11 and they are not likely to become malignant. When there is HSIL that is high grade uh, squamous intraepithelial lesion, uh, this uh, lesion is associated with human papilloma virus. 16, 18 and 33 and they are oncogenic and they are also associated with smoking, HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases. And the type of vulval cancers which develops in these lesions is the warty bacilloid type and uh, this uh, VIN uh, usual type is the high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion associated in young women with STDs and this is predisposing factor for the CA vulva. Now there is a third type of vulval intraepithelial neoplasia. This happens in white postmenopausal women and it is a disease of the seventh decade. It is not associated with human papilloma virus and it is, arises in a background of uh, lichen sclerosis or lichen planus and this produces squamous cell carcinomas of the keratinizing variety of CA vulva. There are a lot of other pre-malignant vulva lesions which can predispose to vulval cancers. So the first variety which we are going to discuss here is the squamous hyperplasia, then we will discuss the lichen sclerosis, then we will discuss squamous dysplasias of the vulva, then we will discuss carcinoma in C2 for the vulva. Now all these lesions has a common complaint that is vulval itching but to diagnose squamous hyperplasia for squamous dysplasia from lichen sclerosis and carcinoma in C2 we need to biopsy the lesions on vulva. All these four lesions together are called as vulval dermatosis and all these four are having a malignant predisposition towards the keratinizing variety of CA vulva. The first category that is the squamous hyperplasia of vulva. These are the whitish focal or diffuse areas and they are firm and cartilaginous and if you were to take a biopsy there will be thickened keratin and epithelial proliferation and we can just give a fluorinated or corticosteroid cream for squamous hyperplasia of vulva and keep the patient under observation. If it is a lichen sclerosis we will see that it is a whitish elevated papula and it is uh, coalescing or merging together as white plaques and they if you touch them they will feel thin and parchment like and they will show epithelial lining. Lichen sclerosis is managed by a clobetasome cream and the patient is kept in observation. Squamous dysplasia is a white red or uh, pigmented uh, lesion and these are usually multifocal and they, their uh, appearance can be like cervical dysplasias and we can excise them with a 5 millimeter clear margin and they it's just a kind of cellular atypia without breaking through the basement membrane. Now carcinoma in situ, carcinoma in situ is just like uh, vulvar dysplasias and the cellular atypia is full thickness but it does not penetrate the basement membrane. So carcinoma in C2 can be treated by laser vaporization or vulval wide local excision. 
what is vulvar intraepithelial neoplasia so it is defined as any intraepithelial vulval uh, lesion which is limited to the vulval skin and it it excludes the keratinized layer it can be associated with the presence of pearls acanthosis neutrophilic infiltration and if you look at the lesion it is warty and elevated plaque and it may be white in color or red in color it can be an ulcerated lesion or a nodular lesion it may be unifocal or it may be multifocal so uh, vulvar uh, intraepithelial neoplasia uh, usually we keep a differential diagnosis of lichen sclerosis and squamous cell hyperplasia uh, vulvar intraepithelial neoplasia the usual time is increasing in incidence just because the postmenopausal life expectancy is increasing and there are more number of women more than 70 years now uh, vulval intraepithelial neoplasia is caused by uh, any chronic vulvar irritation hiv human papilloma virus infection smoking sexually transmitted disease poor nutrition poor hygiene and local uh, moisture and immunosuppressive conditions 50% of these vin cases have got a sequential or a concomitant neoplasia of any other part of the genital tract now vulval intraepithelial neoplasias which occur in younger women are usually associated with the human papilloma virus other risk factors for vulval intraepithelial neoplasia include obesity diabetes chronic dermatitis and pruritus Uh, if you uh, combine the biopsy along with hpv dna detection it increases the sensitivity and specificity for detecting the vulval intraepithelial neoplasia so what we see here is a hyperkeratotic papular lesion in the vulva and this it's it considers as a premalignant lesion it is also considered as a vulval dermatosis the patient presents with vulvar itching and if we take a biopsy we'll find that the membrane is thickened